Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here. And for today's tech tool, uh, I'm gonna be using chirp.qr and it's actually an app. So it's an iOS app. Uh, of course you use it on your iPad. Now, this audio QR code generator, what I love about it is that it allows you to create these audio QR codes that you can tailor and customize for you to enhance uh, teaching and learning. So both as a teacher, you can use it for creating instructional resources or the students can use it also for, for learning. Um, the difference between this and others is that other QR codes, for the most part, what they do is they link uh, a URL to maybe an image address or to a YouTube video or to a web, uh, web link, right, a website. And so what I love about this is that it allows you to create uh, customized, tailored instructional resources. And I'll give you an example of how. We, there was a need at our district. The need was that um, at my campus, 90% of our kids are identified as English language learners. And so what that means is at the end of the year, they have to take a standardized assessment. In Texas, it's called TELPAS because it, me it measures its language domain. So they're listening, they're speaking, they're reading, and they're writing. The, the, the problem is that we do not have a separate and apart classroom to practice this so that they can become proficient and be um, and be successful in this assessment. What needs to happen is we need to couple both our content instruction and our language proficiency skills. Both of them need to be happening at the same time. And that was difficult because I blame myself as a teacher as well. I was just focused on content, content. I was a history teacher and that's all I'm worried about. I'm not an ELA teacher, but it, we need we needed to uh, get out of that mind frame and realize that we have we had to do both. And so this is an example of this the test that the kids would take. And so um, look at the picture and listen to the audio. Choose the answer that best matches the picture. So then they press on these. They look at the image, click on these, and listen to them through headphones and see which sentence matches the picture best. Maybe the sentence would say, the man slipped on the banana peel. This next one would say, the man is eating a banana, you know, and so on and so forth. And so what I thought about is, well, let me create instructional resources such as these where they can actually practice because they never had the chance to actually practice these skills. If they would go once to the computer lab to practice on the computer, to become, you know, um, to be able to navigate through the different features of it. But other than that, they had no other practice than the day of. And so I thought we can create customized instructional resources using our own tools because nothing else was out there. So this is Keynote and I'm creating this tool on Keynote. PowerPoint will work the same way, especially if you feel more comfortable with it. I feel comfortable with my Keynote. And so here I added text, I added a picture, just to kind of show you directly how uh, it's going straight from, it's going straight from your, uh, from the assessment to your instructional resource. And so what you can easily do is this image, can be an image of, I'm a history teacher, it can be an image of American progress, your manifest destiny image. So if that's what I'm teaching, why not make my exit ticket this? Not only am I gonna check for understanding, but we're also gonna practice our language domains. So this is just an example. So um, I've already added three QR codes. I'm gonna show you how to create this last one. And so I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to then mirror my iPad because what I want to show you is how to use that chirp.qr. And basically that's how it looks. Exactly like this is how it looks. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on the little beak and notice that it's, its mouth is open, its beak is open, and the time is going off. That's me. It's recording me. And so it's taking time. So as a teacher, I'd like to kind of keep it as the same time as the state of Texas is using on that standardized test. As a student, when the students have to speak into the computer, they have to speak for at least not, for no more than 90 seconds. And 90 seconds is really your max and your limit. You want that 90 second mark. And so 
Anyways, that gives you a good tool to measure how long you're speaking for. And so then I'm gonna stop it by just clicking on the beak again. And so it recorded for 39 seconds. Think about this. In a bit, I'm going to play it back. How often do our kids get to hear that playback of their voice? We don't want it to be the first time they listen to it the day of the actual assessment. Because the day of the actual assessment, they can play it back twice, right? If the first time they don't like it, they get to delete it. The second time, they can play it back, but they don't get to delete it. That's what they have to turn in. And so I'm going to show you how it sounds. And notice that it's, its mouth is open, its beak is open, and the time is going off. That's me. It's recording me. And so it's taking time. So as a teacher... So let's say I like that recording and I'm ready to save that audio. I'm going to click on this QR code. If I didn't like the recording, right, and I wanted to record again, then I would simply click on the beak again and it would start all over. So right now I'm already five seconds in to that next recording. Okay. So let's say I like it. I'm going to click on, I'm sorry, I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to title it, right? The only thing about this, guys, is it's going to save it to your to your camera roll, it's not going to have that name on there. That's just for the cloud. Okay. So you're never really going to be able to see that name. So I'm going to click on save and I'll show you right now what it means. And once you get that little, um, that little message there, you know that it's saved. So I'm going to go to my camera roll and here it is. That is my QR code that I just created my audio and I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to use my phone just to open it so that you can kind of see it and it's going to load. Click on the beak again and it would start all over. So right now I'm already five seconds in to that next recording. So that's what it does. And so now you have an audio QR code. So what I'm going to do here next is I'm going to show you how I'm going to airdrop that to my MacBook. I'm going to airdrop that image to my MacBook. And so now I'm going to stop screen recording and I'm going to grab that image. Oh, it's loading. And it, it came to my downloads. When I airdrop it, it comes to my downloads. I copied it and I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste. And I'm just going to minimize it and kind of fit it in there. And there you go. And now all I'm going to do next is print this out. And now I have a sample. Let's say this is my fifth one that I've created. What if I do one if I'm a, a science teacher and I want to do it for life science? So I want to do 10, 15 of them for life science or whatever category, chemistry, uh, whatever it may be you can easily do that. And so you can create a collection of them here as you go, right? Creating your, your task cards for your uh, practicing your language proficiencies. This is just an example of how to use this really neat tool uh, called chirp.qr. And so with that said, I hope I didn't uh, take too much of your time, but remember that you can find me at Mrs. Talk Techie on uh, Twitter, and uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to contact me whenever you want, and if you want more help, I'm always here to help. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day, okay?